People talk about the fact that black people score 15 points less than white people. What do you think of this kind of numbering? It's a fact whose meaning is totally unclear and whose existence doesn't in any sense specify the cause. Take the black-white difference in America, which is an average of 15 points, which is one standard deviation. By definition, the test is standardized so that 15 points will be a standard deviation. That's true. I mean, nobody denies that. The issue has never been that. The issue has been why. And the existence just doesn't tell you anything about why. The existence of the 15-point difference is thoroughly consistent with the two utterly extreme interpretations, namely nature and nurture. That is, in principle, it could be so. I don't think it is that the difference is due to inborn capacities that vary between the races. And the other obvious explanation is that the difference is due to the enormous social disadvantages that the legacy and history of racism continues to impose upon the lives of black people in the United States. Either explanation would equally well account for the difference. So it's It is a fact whose meaning is totally unspecified by the existence of the fact itself. Why do you think uh, American society is so obsessed with IQ? I don't know that we're obsessed by it, but uh, I think it arises largely in the context of the lamentable history of our racism. I don't know that it's as much an issue in more homogeneous societies, but we have a situation based on the legacy of racism and continued oppression of people of African descent in this country that has led, for social reasons, to poor average performance of blacks on these tests. That doesn't tell you why it happens, but in a basically racist climate, in a country with a strong racist history, I suppose it's not surprising that particularly conservative social thinkers would try to relate poor performance of blacks to intrinsic biological limits. So are you trying to say that measuring IQ is used here as an instrument for racism? It has been in the past. I don't think it's much used that way. Now, in fact, I'm not sure that IQ in the old-fashioned sense is much measured by mental testers at all today, except if you read Ernstein and Murray's bell curve, clearly these data still exist. I just didn't think that many people granted that number much meaning anymore. As I like to put it, The quick critique of the bell curve is that it's based upon four assumptions, all of which have to be true. If any one of them is false, the whole argument collapses. First, there has to be a meaningful single number that can be given to intelligence. I think that's false. Secondly, you have to be able to rank people in a single linear order upon it. And that order has to then correlate with social attributes, whether you go to prison or not, whether you have children out of wedlock, etc., your income. Thirdly, that number has to be highly heritable. And fourthly, it has to be unchangeable, or effectively unchangeable. A lot of people confuse the third and the fourth. They assume that if something's heritable, it means it's unchangeable, but that's false. Suppose the first three were true, and they're not. I mean, suppose there was a legitimate number, and you could rank people, and it was highly hereditary. It still could be very mutable. For example, the obvious example is I may have a... Uh, an inherited defect of vision, which is 100% inherited, and I go to the drugstore and I buy a pair of eyeglasses and my vision is fine. I mean, it could be, all those things could be true about intelligence, but the equivalent of buying the pair of eyeglasses, namely programs of remedial education, might boost IQ, and then the whole argument would collapse. Oh, then how do you feel about testing uh, children to see what would be the best school for them to go to? Depends on what you want to use it for. Again, if you look at Binet's original intentions in setting up the IQ test in 1905, 1906, when he did the first ones. You see, Binet was a French psychologist, and he was commissioned by the Commissioner of Education in France to devise a test to find students who needed help. And that's why he did the test. And his motives were entirely benevolent. In fact, he specifically argued against giving a hereditary interpretation because he understood that if you did that, you would misinterpret the number as a limit rather than an aid. He wanted to use the number as an aid to identify children who needed help so that they could be given help and uh, everything could be done for them. Whereas if you give a hereditary interpretation, then you identify a low score with people who can't be helped. 
the exact opposite occurs. You invert the original purpose. So as long as Binet's original purposes are honored, I, the tests can be used benevolently, and sometimes they are. For example, tests are used usefully to help identify people who have specific difficulties like dyslexia or autism or other forms of disability in learning, and there's nothing wrong with that. The human mind just doesn't work very well with certain questions. We're very bad at probability. We're always making these dichotomous divisions of things into two. One of the things we're very bad at is, is when we're faced with something that's very complex, as intelligence is, because it involves lots of different independent abilities, the relationship between hereditary and environment, and all these complex questions. We have this terrible tendency to try and make things simple, try and get a single number. There's a whole history in subject after subject of trying to encompass complex and, and independent attributes with a single number. Uh, my colleague uh, Medawar, for example, once wrote a very interesting article showing how in soil science, in this totally different field, people f for decades got hung up on trying to get a single number to measure the quality of soil. Now, how can you do that? There's no such thing as the quality of soil. This one is 51. This one is 76.2. There, there isn't. They're just different things that soils can do. The same, now the human mind is even more complex. There is no number that can capture the quality of mind. And it's almost humorous to think that there is. But unfortunately, the assumption that we can do such a thing tied to the use of such theories by conservative social ideologies has had profoundly negative consequences for the lives of millions of people. There are millions of people, particularly in this country, who've been told they can't do this, who've been denied admission to this or that program on the basis of a number, which was falsely interpreted as representing an intrinsic limit upon them based on their biology, but was in fact only a measure of social influences upon their lives. So unfortunately, it's not funny when it's had such tragic consequences. And that's, of course, why we are upset over the fact that the issue seems to keep coming up because it has consequences, it hurts people.